Hey, it's your boy Vonnie Hudson with securityplusPro.com and today you're going to learn three things. One, I'm going to show you how to open up the terminal in Linux. We're going to use Kali Linux in this particular demonstration because it is a favorite among penetration testers, ethical hackers, and even black hat attackers. And I just think it's a really cool distro and that's why you need to use it. Two, I'm going to show you the importance of case in Linux, that typing the same command in uppercase is different than lowercase. And then finally, we'll finish up with a really neat trick using the terminal to find, using the built-in help system, how to use almost any command on Linux. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First, let's look at how we can open the terminal. There are a couple of things you can do. One, you can open the terminal just by clicking the terminal in the left corner, in Kali Linux at least. But you can also right-click the desktop and say, open terminal, like so. Now, when you do this, you are now inside of the terminal. Let's say you wanted to find out where you are. If you wanted to sort of orient yourself in the uh, Linux world, you can type PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory, and it's telling us we are in a folder called forward slash root. Now this is the same as going to our files and going to other locations, computer, and then root. Right now, this folder, the contents of this folder, is the same thing as the output of this command. And the way we can verify that is by typing ls, which is the same equivalent as the dir command in Windows. And so you can see here I'm listing all these files and folders. The folders are the blue ones and the files are the white uh, text. If I type capital ls, notice nothing happens. And that's because case matters. Linux, Linux is really particular about this. And that's why I usually enter all my commands in lowercase because it Linux prefers lowercase for the most part. Okay, so if I type CD desktop, I can go into the desktop print working directory and now I can also orient myself and see exactly where I am. Oops, into the desktop. So let's go ahead and clear this out. I'm going to close the uh, file explorer there. And let's go ahead and look at how we can use a command that we're not very familiar with. So let's say we want to change our MAC address. Um, there's a command called Mac Changer, and if you don't know how to use it, you don't need to go to Google because everything you need is right in Linux. So let's type Mac Changer. You see here it's telling you. In order to use this, you need to type Mac Changer, Options, and then Device. Now you might be asking, what are options? And that's what we're going to find out now by using this help system, right? So if I type Mac Changer dash dash help, you can see here there's a couple of options, and one of them is list. I can type dash L or I can type dash dash list equals and then some keyword. So let me show you how this works. So using the usage example above, I can type Mac changer dash L. That's an option. And it's going to list every single vendor ID that I can use for my Mac. Now if I press up, up twice, go back to help, I can list a specific keyword. So let's say I want to see if I want to use the Apple MAC address. Maybe I wanted to make my network interface card appear as a Apple computer, even though this is really a Linux computer. So the way to do that would be to go to Mac changer, dash dash list equals, and then let's type Apple in there. And bam, you can see now we have the OUI, the organizational unique identifier for Apple. And so these, these are the first three bytes of the MAC address. A MAC address is 48 bits, six bytes. And the first six characters, uh, the first six characters of the first three bytes equals the unique identifier for that MAC address. That is what identifies the device on the network. So if we change those three bytes to something else, like Apple, then when we send out a packet from this computer, it's gonna appear to originate from an Apple device, not from Linux. So that's pretty slick, right? So if we go back to Mac Changer, up, up, help, and now that I've copied the other, uh, I, I've copied this to my clipboard, I can go here and I could say Mac changer dash dash Mac equals, and I'm just gonna right click, paste, and I'm just gonna make up the last three bytes, like so. Now, if I do this, it's not gonna work. And that's because there's another part of the command, it's the device. I need to make sure that I specify the correct device or Mac is not going to know which NIC to apply 
the Mac change to. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab, right? And let's go in here, let's do if config, and we see right here that we are ETH0. We have ETH0 and we have LO. This is the local loopback address. We don't need that, we need to use ETH0. And right now our Mac address is this. So we're gonna change that now. So I'm gonna make sure we use ETH0 for our device. Let's go back here, put in ETH0. And notice, it shows you our current Mac. And this is our permanent Mac, this is our real Mac. And then it just changed it to this, which means that we are now appearing as a Apple airport card, <laughs> a wireless airport card. And if we go back here and we type if config again, you can see that our MAC address indeed did change. So that is how you can use Linux. That's how you can get into the terminal, the importance of case. Remember, type in the same word two different ways, uppercase or lowercase. It's not the same thing to Linux. Make sure you use lowercase. And in order to get help on almost any command in Linux, you usually just type the command followed by dash H or dash dash help. So that's all we have today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you thumb it up. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out our blog on securityplusprocom Sign up for our newsletter so you can get awesome updates, everything you need to pass the SY0-501 test. And I will see you later. All right, thanks. Bye.